The Philippines is an archipelagic country with around 300,000 square kilometers. The country lies in a hot and humid climate in the Pacific Ocean and consists of 7,101 islands. In the past, most of the area of the country was covered by tropical forests. Nowadays, you can find only their remains and they are still disappearing due to growing human population. It has been said that 93% of the original vegetation has been destroyed and converted to agricultural land. Despite this fact, the Philippines is a country with one of the greatest biodiversities in the world. It is one of the 17 megadiversity countries with more than 52,177 described species. Many are still waiting for scientific description. One of the most unique species and the object of our investigation is the Philippine tarsier. The Philippine tarsier is a nocturnal, insectivorous primate with huge eyes and very long legs and fingers. You can hold its body in your palm. They got their name by elongating tarsus. Only one species, Tarsius cerechta, is found in the Philippines. The Philippine tarsier lives in the last remains of forests on a few Philippine islands. Tarsiers are endangered, especially due to habitat loss and also hunting for pet trade because of their cute appearance. Scientists do not know much about this remarkable animal. There is a risk that it will disappear before we will have the chance to discover the secrets of its life. There were reasons why the project named Tarsius was started. The project is led by Czech zoologist Dr. Milada Petru and focuses on the research and conservation of this interesting animal. The whole idea of the Tarsius project began in 2007 when I was on an expedition in the Philippines and met the ongoing conservation projects there. I decided to get involved in conservation and research of this species. After two years of preparation and gathering funds, we could finally go to the field. The field work was conducted since 2009 and during the whole year 2010. We have chosen Bohol Island as our study site. Tarsiers can be found also on some other islands, including Leyte, Samar or Mindanao, but Bohol Island is the most famous because of its tarsier. They are a symbol of the island. That is why we started on Bohol. Not much is known about the Philippine tarsier and that was one of the reasons why we decided to focus on research of this tiny animal. We focus on study of behavior, use of the home range, social system and also communication. Because the tarsier is a very small and cryptic animal, the only chance how we could study it was by using radio transmitters. Very small transmitters were attached around the neck of the animals and we could follow the tarsiers through this method called radiotelemetry. Besides the research, we also focus on conservation of this species in several ways. First, we hope that the results of our research will be used in planning of further conservation activities. Second, we focus on conservation education of local people, which is one of the most important conservation tools. We are also involved in the captive tertiary issue. These animals are very sensitive, very demanding and no zoos in the world are able to keep and especially breed them successfully. Which means that the only hope for conservation of Philippine tarsier is in situ conservation, which means the place of origin in the Philippines. The first step needed for the telemetric observation is the preparation, including detailed mapping of the whole locality, labeling of points in the forest that are used for observation of the tarsiers. Catching several tarsiers that will wear the radio colors is itself not a very easy task. We relied on help from local hunters. Every hunter has his own catching method. It is obvious where they got their experience. 
We relied on experience and knowledge of local hunters, people that were poachers in the past. Now they have become conservationists. One of the previous hunters is still working for us. Uh, the most important moment is after you catch the tarsiers, when you have to attach the collar. The radio transmitter is very small, the weight of a tarsier is around 100 and 150 grams and we use transmitters that had around 4 grams. This weight is no problem for them. The radio collar is attached around the neck of the animal and the tarsier is released on the same place where it was caught. Then the observation can begin. A key member of our team, especially in terms of methodology, is Dr. Lubomir Peške, who is a world-renowned expert in radiotelemetric research of different bird or mammalian species. The tarsiers are located every night using antenna. The measured position is marked according to points in the forest. The position and movement of each monitored animal is then put into the map. According to it, we can then analyze the home ranges of the tarsiers, their overlap or changes. We can also get information about the social lives of tarsiers in their natural environment. A part of our research is also recording vocal communication. Because of their nocturnal lifestyle, acoustic communication is very important for them, apart from the scent marking that they do regularly to mark their home territory. Tarsiers call mainly during sunset. They use loud calls for communicating long distances and also some more quiet signals, for example a type of chirping or singing for shorter distances. Despite this, vision is still extremely important for them. Unlike other nocturnal animals, tarsiers do not have tapetum lucidum the reflective layer behind the retina in the eye, which is important for better night vision. They have a different adaptation. Their eyes fill almost their entire face in order to absorb enough light, and imagine that their eyes weigh more than their brains. The eyes cannot move, therefore the tarsier must move its whole head. Due to an unusually mobile spine, a tarsier can rotate its head 180 degrees on both sides. Tarsiers are very active animals. When you see the tarsier, it looks like cute, maybe clumsy little animal, but in fact they are very fast. They feed on insects and they must jump to catch the prey. Their jumps are incredibly fast. We try to record it on our video cameras as well as in pictures when the wildlife photographer Petr Slavik joined our project. Recording their jumps and fast movements on camera was one of the biggest challenges. Tarsiers live in various habitat types in the Philippines, in forests, shrubs, mangroves, or tropical rainforests with dense vegetation and trees that offer it protection like tall grasses, bushes, and bamboo shoots. As a small animal, the tarsier has a lot of enemies. Besides natural predators like civets, owls, or snakes, they are threatened by domestic cats. However, their biggest enemy are humans. These animals often end up on the illegal pet trade and lately they have become famous as a tourist attraction. Especially on Bohol Island, they are often kept by private people near the main tourist destinations. Very often, the animals are kept in unsuitable conditions for them, in small areas. Visitors can come close to them, touch them. Everything is done during the day when the tarsier should be sleeping in its natural conditions. It is obvious that in such conditions tarsiers suffer and die. With an increasing number of tourists, there is also an increasing number of tarsiers illegally caught from the wild.
I got involved in monitoring the conditions in those facilities and improving the conditions provided to these animals. But we must say that there is still a lot of work that must be done together with Philippine authorities. My future dream and plan is the establishment of a professional conservation center for Tarsiers together with our local partner. Field research is not the only part of the Tarsius project. With local conservation institutions like Simply Butterflies, the Conservation Center in Bilar, or the Philippine Tarsier Foundation and also schools, the project focuses on the conservation education of local people, including visitors of those conservation centers and also students. Besides a couple of presentations at the university in Bilar, our greatest success is cooperation with the high school focusing on natural sciences. An education course for high school students was conducted for a second time the second year in a row. During the two weeks that students spend with us in the forest, we try to share with them the theoretical knowledge about our seers, conservation, or the role of modern zoological garden. We show them all the methodology that we use in the field. They observe with us the tarsiers during the night and they learn how to analyze the data. Because of the nocturnal activity, the fast movements in the dense vegetation and the lacking reflective layer in the eye, tapetum lucidum, the observation of tarsier in their natural environment is extremely difficult. Very few studies have focused on this species so far. Therefore, the information about their behavior collected during the Tarsius project is very valuable. The whole team, led by Dr. Melada Petru, is analyzing the data collected in the Philippines. The results of this first long-term study of the Philippine Tarsiers will not only increase our knowledge about this species, but they can also be used for their conservation. Conservation education is one of the most effective tools for nature protection and together with the Filipino organizations, the effort of the team of conservationists brings its first visible results. Tarsier is now classified as a specially protected faunal species of the Philippines. The population estimates are not known, but the population of the Philippine Tarsier is still decreasing. His future depends on conservation activities that will be conducted. You can join our effort and support the Tarsius project and its goals. Your support will help with the conservation of a world natural treasure. <laughs>